Our build-up continues to the World Cup. We're looking at each of the 10 teams. Anil Kumble is uh, doing that for us here on Cricket Next. Uh, let's actually now look at the squad that New Zealand have assembled for this World Cup. Kane Williamson, one of the best batsmen in the world, is their captain. You see the quality there in players such as uh, Ross Taylor, who forms a central part of that squad. But then a lot of players who've been effective over the last uh, few years. Tom Latham's got runs. Jimmy Neesham's making a comeback. Martin Guptill will bring the experience at uh, the top of the order. And there is, of course, the spin options of Santna and Ish Sodi besides some quality in the fast bowlers. Tim Saudi, who is the vice captain. Every World Cup that uh, they participate in, New Zealand are the one team that, uh, that essentially bring this all for one, one for all spirit uh, into their play. No, absolutely. I think they're punched about their weight at every World Cup. Yes. Uh, nobody gives them a chance. They reached the final of a, of a World Cup, last, uh, the last World Cup. Yes. So they have the ability to certainly make it to the top four. But the challenge is, you know, Kane Williamson is coming again from an injury concern. Uh, he didn't have a great IPL, but, you know, you don't need to give too much uh, importance to his form in the IPL, but the injury concern, I'm not really sure whether he's fully fit, but he still will play all the matches in the World Cup. So he is their mainstay. Ross Taylor, there's heavy dependence on these two batsmen. Tom Latham is a quality player. Yes, he scored runs for New Zealand, and Guptil at the start gives them off to a you know flyer. If these four need to fire every single game, otherwise New Zealand will find it difficult in the batting lineup. So that's the challenge they have. They're faster bowlers. I mean, we saw Trent Bolt isn't bowling the same that, uh, you know, he's used to. He needs to bowl at that 140 and then let the ball swing. England, it will help him swing the ball. If he can swing the ball and then Tim Saudi swings the ball, then these two have had a formidable uh, uh, partnership as a bowling unit. They have the spinners in Isodi and Santner. They're quality spinners. But overall, I think New Zealand will still have a consistent and, and do really well in the World Cup. But will they go all the way? It's, yeah, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, in fact, Ross Taylor, you touched on, has been, is not just experienced, but he's been one of the best one-day players in the world in the last uh, uh, couple of years. That's the sort of uh, player now that becomes hugely important for New Zealand because if he's not going to make this, uh, this rich vein of form count in a World Cup, and where else will it matter? Oh, absolutely. I think Ross Taylor is a quality player. Uh, he can take on the faster bowlers. He can take on the spinners. And he's shown consistent performances yeah. for New Zealand in that middle order. So the middle order, he I think there was too much that was put on Ross Taylor because the top order wasn't firing. So it's, if New Zealand have to go all the way and beat good teams like India, England, South Africa, uh, Australia, then they'll have they'll need to have the top order fire if the top order fails then there's too much pressure on Kane Williamson and Ross Taylor to perform yes. uh, day in, day out. Yes, Martin Guptil, of course, a very experienced opener, had a good time at the World Cup last time around. One of the other things that New Zealand always brings to one-day cricket is these players who can do a little bit of everything, are or, or, all-rounders. Um, Jimmy Neesham's part of this squad. We've seen a little bit of Colin de Grandom, um, and he's part of this squad, which basically means that uh, they try and put together a, a team which is 13, 14 players playing in 11. Yeah, that's always been the case. I mean, not just this New Zealand team, but yeah. also in the past. New Zealand teams of the past always had, say, a Scott Styrus who will, you know, come and bowl uh, and is a batsman. So, so you will have these all-rounders who can give you a few overs in the middle. Colin De Grandhome yeah. uh, can do that. Jimmy Neesham. So, both of them will give you five or six overs uh, in, in, a, in a World Cup uh, game. So, yes, they have the ability, but will it be too much dependence on the, just these two batsmen? The others need to, you know, uh, carry their weight as well. You know, Tom Latham needs to fire the all-rounder. One of the all-rounders at least need to, uh, you know, do their job. Uh, and, and then Guptil will have to score runs at the top. If these three then fire, then it's a lot easier for a Kane Williamson and Ross Taylor. And uh, we've seen a little bit of uh, Mitchell Santner in the IPL. We've seen a little bit of Ish Sodi in the IPL. They've gone for these two spin bowling options. Again, do you see them using these two spinners uh, consistently in a playing 11? I don't know. I mean, you know, because they have so many all-rounders like a Jimmy yeah. Nisham and a Colin de Grandhomme, they 
can afford to have two spinners in the in the squad. Let's not forget that Santner can bat as well. Yes. Uh, and uh, you know it'll be good to have uh, East Sodhi and Santner bowling in tandem because both of them. I mean, East Sodhi is a quality bowler. Santner keeps it tight. They can be a handful. So with uh, Trent Bolt, uh, then uh, Tim Saudi, uh, you know, at early on, and these two spinners in the middle overs, I think they'll be uh, uh, decent attacking. Uh, so yes or no for you for uh, New Zealand making it as far as the last four? I think difficult. I think they're heavily dependent on uh, Ross Taylor and Kane Williamson. So if only two batsmen need to get through a tournament, it's going to be a challenge. So I, I, I think it's it's a no.